Hi, my name is Steve and this is the Triangle 5-1 Ranch. This video will be focused on developing the art of horsemanship. It is part four of the Elements series. So far, the elements and concepts I've briefly touched on are, from part one, good habits, right and wrong, safety, preparation, and awareness. From part two, pressure and release, yield and escape, field timing and balance, respect, discipline, and correction. From part three, trust, herd leadership, and pecking order, make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult, and training or teaching. In this short talk, I'll use, give you some of my pointers on developing the art of horsemanship. In the second part of this video, I'll pass on some other resources that I've found helpful. This brings us to the subject of developing our horsemanship skills. What separates humans from all the other animals in the world is that we can pass a great deal of knowledge to each other. Not only that, but this knowledge can be accumulated over many generations. Okay, you say, but what about skill? Let's talk about skill for a second. What is skill? I define skill as knowledge combined with fine motor action applied to accomplish a task. If you were going to have a surgery done today, would you want a surgeon who had performed that surgery before or one who had only studied it and never actually done it? If you were going to in for brain surgery, would you want a skilled heart surgeon or a skilled brain surgeon? Obviously, you would opt for the person who not only had the specific knowledge, but also had practiced the procedure many times. To become a skilled horseman, you should always be increasing your knowledge base. There are many ways to do this in this modern age. One of them, of course, is watching YouTube videos. But all of the equestrian knowledge in the world won't make you a skilled horseman. You need to practice on a real horse. My best teacher is my horse is a phrase I've heard throughout my time spent with horses. This is true as far as the actual motor control needed to ride. The horse is the best teacher of feel time and imbalance. But I can pass to you the knowledge I have of what to feel for and what I know about the timing and the balance to look for. Horsemanship is an athletic skill. As such, there are times to go out and drill. You need to be careful with these drills because you can sour a horse real quick with excessive drills. So you should try and make these drills as fun for the horse as possible. The drills are not just for the horse. Whenever you practice a specific yield, you should examine your own self. The horse carried me through the yield, but did I sit correctly and apply the correct pressure? Feel the horse move, tie my body with the horses, and move in harmony with, with the horse for a balanced yield. If you feel yourself making the same mistake over and over, don't get angry with yourself. That does not help. Observe that you did it incorrectly, and then try to envision how it would feel if done correctly. Then try it again. Always try to make it fun for the horse. If your horse is enjoying its time with you, it will learn much faster than if it's, it is a drudge. One of the things I do is look at how confining the drill or exercise is, and then do something next that is opposite and constraint. Again, an example is side passing. From my point of view, this is one of the most confining exercises I do on a horse. Yes, in dressage, there are four, far more confining exercises, but I don't teach dressage. Side passing blocks the forward and backwards movement of the horse, but also causes it to move in an unnatural way. I've never seen a horse out in pasture side pass. After I get an acceptable side pass for that horse, I may trot or lope it on a loose rein so that it feels freed up. Ideally, when I'm teaching a horse, what I like to do is drill for 10 to 15 minutes to warm up and get where that horse is today. Then I like to take it on a trail ride. On this trail ride, I walk straight lines, circles, and serpentines. In the country where I, where I live, we are blessed with a lot of yucca plants. It hurts to brush up against a yucca. The horses don't like to rub up against them either. So it makes guiding a horse around yuccas very easy. Make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. I try to trot and lope the horse during these rides. When I get back to the home place, 
I'll drill for a few more minutes so that the horse doesn't get immediate re release just for being at the barn, thus preventing it, in theory, from becoming barn sour. There are a lot of good horsemen in this world. I'm not familiar with the majority of them. The ones I'm listing are the ones I know about and respect. I'll try to convey in a short sentence or two what I like about them. If you know of others that I don't mention, don't think it is because I don't like them. I've just either never run across them or haven't had time to explore their work. The ones I do list, I don't necessarily always agree with everything they have to say. For that matter, I don't always agree with what I've said in the past. I just like the way they handle horses and the outcome they get from them. It's a journey, not a destination. There are a good many trainers on YouTube that a lot of their videos are simply harsh criticism of other horse people. I think it is better to focus on the right way of doing things rather than building myself up by looking down on others. So a short list appears in the comments of this video. Well, that concludes this four-part series on the elements and concepts of horsemanship. I hope you have learned from it, enjoyed viewing and reviewing it. If you find these videos helpful, please like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Leave a comment if you want to add something or have a question. If you know someone who you think would find this video interesting, please share it with them. Thank you for watching this video.